Hello and welcome back to my channel and today's video we're going to be talking about the difference between investing in property for a limited company uh, as opposed to in your personal name. Um, so it's a big one today. Now for those who don't know me if it's the first time coming to my channel my name is Aaron and I'm the founder of the Property Lab and we are completely revolutionizing the way busy professionals invest in property. Uh, we help them uh, make passive income easy with our property investment system here um, and it works really really well the YouTube channel is completely designed around um, providing value so you can come here um, really it's for anyone who's on the fence about property investment or they're thinking about getting into property investment they can come here watch these videos and have the confidence to move forward okay so that's the YouTube side of it um, so that being said let's jump into this video today limited company versus the personal name um, and it's quite a big one like it gets talked about quite a lot and still, even though there's some, been some changes that have happened like a few years back now, there are still people out there that don't fully understand why you'd go for one way or the other. Um, typically, if you haven't invested in property before, then why would you know this You know, if you haven't really looked into it before? So this is just why I'm going to do this video. Um, but anyone who's got property currently um, will, will know the differences here now. So yeah, it's for you guys out there um, who are thinking about getting into, the, into property right now. So with that being said, let's jump into it. What I want to cover is, um, firstly, what does it mean to invest under a limit structure? Okay, what does it actually look like? Uh, and then what does it mean to invest in personal name? So just the differences really, just to make it nice and clear. I'll keep it very simple. Um, just want to make sure there's a clear difference between what it looks like to invest in the company and, and your own name. Uh, then I want to talk about the downsides of your personal names and specifically I want to mention section 24, which is the... Uh, rule, rule that came in um, that completely changed everything around why you'd then want to move to a limited company uh, so we'll cover that and then we'll talk about the upside of a limited company investment and that's particularly around the protection side of it uh, and then I'll just summarize with which way you should go um, and now there isn't going to be a definitive this is going to be perfect for everyone and this is like uh, there's going to be differences okay so that's why I've put there okay it's not financial advice I don't know everyone's individual tax situations so I'm just going to be able to give you high level information and then with you knowing your own situation, you can decide which camp you're in essentially. Um, so that's how I want to cover it. And yeah, we'll go from there. So start us off then. We're going to talk about what it means to invest in the limited company. And so I've got my Myro board here. So let's just quickly draw it out. Um, for those of you watching as well, uh, if you want to just put this on at 1.2x um, speed up, I do that on all the videos I watch. Okay, so sometimes when I realize I'm recording these um, I don't edit them at currently okay I don't have a lot of time to do all that so they are just kind of me talking away and kind of waffling a bit um, and drawing and things like that so yeah just feel free to put on 1.2 okay I find it works good for me anyway um, but there you go so yeah um, starting off with them this is a little drawing of us and we want to talk about what it looks like to invest in our personal name okay so this is me and then this is the properties I own Okay, nice little drawing of our properties <laughs> over there, that one. Cool, so this is me owning property, um, and it's very simple, okay? That property is now legally under my personal name, and that's how it works. Now, the difference in the company is I can create a company, um, establish that company, and essentially buy assets through that company. Um, so it's a limited structure. So when I say limited structure, we're talking about a limited company that you can create. Okay. Um, uh, and you may hear it be called a uh, term terminology of SPV. Okay. Um, special purpose vehicle. And it's just another name for it essentially, but it, for a company that's holding assets. So what it means is the company buys the assets. I'll just draw two for now. Um, the company buys the assets, but you own the company. And that is the difference, okay? Um, pretty obvious, but there is a big difference. And I don't want to get into too much, I don't want to complicate too much. So I want to keep it as simple as possible. There is a difference legally from you owning a company and the company owning the assets um, and you owning the, the assets straight away. But bigger picture there isn't that much difference okay so don't really think too much about it um, at this point okay it's not worth putting too much energy into it just know that um, yeah you can get the company to buy the assets or you can buy the assets personally but even when the company buys the assets 
you are obviously the director of that company and you own that company. Um, so you're in control of the assets, but you just don't own them legally on paper. I won't go into any more detail on that for now, okay? So that's how it, it looks. Um, now, the downside of doing it in your personal name. So section 24, um, and this came in, so the government brought us in uh, uh, for a number of reasons, I guess, um, but really it's about um, the advantage of them doing this is it's pushing people towards a limited company structure because they're, they're basically, the, the change that we're going to talk about now um, incentivizes you to use a limited company. Now, yeah, arguments as to why that is, but essentially that if they can, if you if everyone's um, owning assets under limited company structure, okay, it's very easy for them to keep control of who owns what. Um, they can literally search my name, they can find all my companies, all the assets, all the information under that asset, it's all public, okay, because it's under a limited company structure. That's the main benefit to the government, I guess, and the authorities. So therefore, they're incentivizing that. How they do that is what they did is they punished the people that owned property in their personal name. So anyone who owned assets, um, so this was huge for people who owned, who built up portfolios over their lifetime, uh, or had portfolios passed down. Like so, it, it affected so many people, um, and they owned all these assets. Now all of a sudden, they made a change where the you have a mortgage on a property, a buy tech mortgage. Okay, so when you're investing in property. You get that leverage on the property. Okay, we've done other videos about that. I'm not going to cover that right now. We've got the leverage. We have a payment that we need to make every single month back to the, the banks, the lenders. Okay, that interest only payment was always a tax deductible, um, and it is officially genuine. It's a tax deductible. Okay, it's a um, an expense of the business. So therefore, you take it away from your profits, and you're left with your net profit, and that's what you tax. But they came in and said you're no longer going to be able to put that as a tax deductible. So now long, no, your profit is this, your profit is actually on paper is this, um, and it includes that, that mortgage payment. Now for those who had very high mortgages, all of a sudden that's now getting, that's money getting taxed. So your the rental income, you could just take that for, I'm going to give you an example just to make it a bit easy, but let's say we had a thousand pound rental income and you had 500 pounds, um, a mortgage payment. Rental, we're not forgetting, I just forget any other expenses right now. You get your thousand pounds and you pay the mortgage company back the 500, and then you, you've got 500 pound profit and you pay tax on that. Fair enough. Now you're paying tax on a thousand pounds. That is absolutely crazy. Okay, you may even think that you've just misunderstood me on that. You haven't. Okay, that is how it is. It is crazy. Um, but that's how they did it. And what that meant is, and that's why if you've heard any bad experiences from um landlords at the moment okay so the old school landlords or people that have um invested in property in the personal name for the long term built up portfolios now coupled with the interest rates going up as well they're now having to pay more tax and they uh the interest rates have gone up so that mortgage payment that they have to pay back is higher and it's all taxable it's completely destroyed their portfolios okay um now the way around this because there is a way around it um is to invest in a limited company and that's what they're doing. Unfortunately, there are so many people that have been affected by this, and this is why a lot of landlords are selling up. They're trying to just get rid of their portfolios. It's just no longer profitable for them. Um, it costs too much to try and transition everything over to the limited structure. Okay, so it's really messed a lot of things up. Um, for those of you who are new to property investment, though, you are in a perfect position. Okay, so you haven't had to experience this. Okay, so you can start off on the right foot, um, and that is the point of this video. Okay, so. That's the downside of the personal name, and that's why it's affecting. Okay, just to caveat on it, um, I won't go into too much detail, but if you're a lower rate taxpayer um, and your income from your investment um, is going to keep you on that lower level, it's probably not worth actually doing the limited company structure because there's other costs that come with it. Um, now, typically, the, most of the people that are watching that follow my channel and my clients, okay, are in the higher tax paying um, bracket. Um, so. I won't just hit on this too much, but essentially it's probably not that, it's probably not worth actually doing a limited company if you're going to just keep maybe one property um, and you're a lower, lower income tax um, earner, okay? So but typically if you're in the higher rate bracket and you're looking at building and scaling a property portfolio to actually create financial freedom and actually really create um, a, a large passive income from this, which is 99% of my clients and people that watch this, this channel so 
Um, for those of you, okay, we are going to be looking more closer to the limited um, structure, okay? So I'll just mention that bit, um, the difference between the 20% taxes and, and the higher. Um, so on to the upsides of the limited company. So it's really around the protection. Obviously, the things I just mentioned there, the uh, avoiding the um, Section 24 penalty, I guess, um, is, is a benefit, but it's the protection side of it. And just to explain a little bit, a little bit more what I mean about, by that, um, when you're owning an asset under the limited company structure, uh, like I say, the government can see it. It's all um, you know, uh, open information. But the protection comes because they can't just do something that well. They've just hit the um, the average landlord with. Okay, where it's it's a lot harder to make huge changes to the laws under limited companies. Okay, because there's so many, especially if they're trying to target property. We are now part of, um, we have a limited company that we use for property investment, but there's limited companies for all sorts of industries, right? And, and businesses. So they can't come in and now obviously make a huge change to the laws because it's going to affect everyone in a limited company. So it's just protection, okay? So having a limited company does give you an element of protection. Um, it's limited liability, okay? Although you are still, in terms of the property, You'll know this as you go into more detail when you start investing in property that you do have to get a, a PG, a personal guarantee through a, through the legal system, through the solicitor. Um, so you can't just kind of like liquidate the company and just not pay back the debt. So they cover that off. However, there is just, you are um, less liable, okay? It just protects you um, from external things. So that's really one of the main benefits, the protection side of it, of owning assets through a limited com company legally um and there's some more benefits around tax that i don't want to go into again because it's different for everyone's situations okay um on that if you are about to invest in property okay there's um two ways you can really go about it if you're comfortable with what you're doing um and you've got the time and the knowledge you can go forward and find best investments and what i'd say is find yourself a good property tax accountant um and they're gonna be able to show you how exactly how you can set yourself up in the right way um, or if you don't have the time or the knowledge and you want to, you want help with this for your process, then you're going to want to come to a property investment agency like mine uh, at the Property Lab and um, we can help you go through that full process again. We have a power team of you know, solicitors, brokers, but um, again, property tax accountants that we can help you get this all set up. And as that's actually part of the process when our clients work with us, we help them set this up in the right way. So that's it really. Yeah, um, coming back to the what we covered so the protection side of it limits company you are better off and more protected to, to use that um, structure that's why we 99% of the time we, we lean in towards that when the the end goal is to build a large portfolio yeah 99% of the time it's gonna be that again just a little caveat not financial advice I don't know your situation so don't um, take it word for word on that but just know that's the real differences between your personal name and your limited company structure okay so I think Hopefully, I, again, I've waffled, I know, but I think I've covered the main points there of what it is for a limited, what it is for your personal name, the differences, and hopefully now you've been able to understand in your own situation which camp you're in. Um, and the last bit I just wanted to mention there was agency advice, okay? I do recommend you get an agency advice. Um, doesn't have to be with me, okay? Um, but make sure you're getting help going through this process, okay? Because there are a lot more um there's a lot more compliance and laws in there than there were 10 you know five ten years ago 20 years ago so you just want to make sure that you're doing it right you're in a good position if you haven't um stepped into property investment yet you're in a great position because you have all the knowledge around you okay and you can go in um with the right information okay so you're in a good place just make sure you get advice when you're doing it okay whether that's using your tax accountant um, or an agency like mine where we can help you um, deliver um, all that service for you okay if you are interested in that okay and this is um, you know you don't have to do this but there is going to be a link in the description if you want to um, work with us and ha have us help you build your portfolio then we can do that for you that's what we do with our clients um, as a property investment agency we can do it completely hands-off for you um, so there's gonna be a link in there okay only click it if you think it can help you um, I'm not going to push too hard on that, okay? Um, it's there for you if you think it can help. That being said, to wrap this video up then, um, I hope you've got value from it. The main things to take away 
is understand your tax situation, okay? What bracket you're in, um, are you a higher earner? If you are, typically you're gonna be looking at a limited company for your cost investment. If you're a lower um, taxpayer um, and you, you plan on staying in that kind of lower income bracket, then probably stick to your, your personal name because um, there are obviously some expenses to having a limited company structure and a, an accountant and stuff like this. So um, just weigh it up on your situation, okay? So that being said, I think that's everything covered. Um, anything I've missed or anything that you're thinking you wish you'd I, I could have explained, please put it in the comments or reach out to me. Um, there's links on, on my channel to my my personal um, LinkedIn's and, and Facebooks and stuff like that. So you can just reach out to me, DM me, um, and I'll happily answer any questions, okay? Um, that's all for now, and I look forward to speaking to you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.